Our next speaker, Dr. Motaz Albarwani, Senior Director at the Center of Research Computing in New York University, Abu Dhabi, speaking on today's topic, Research Computing at New York University, Abu Dhabi. Over to you, Dr. Motaz. Thank you, Melvin. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Omren, for inviting me to speak at this uh, event. Um, I think the last one was uh, maybe three years ago. Um, I have a picture uh, to prove it. I'll show you later. Let me start with uh, my slides. My agenda uh, today um, uh, will be, I will talk a little bit about research computing in general, um, and then I'll talk about our center for research computing. And specifically, I will talk about high performance computing and the computational research that happens here uh, at NYU Abu Dhabi, and uh, followed by some of the other services that we offer uh, including uh, research support services. So what is research computing? Okay. Research computing has many things. It consists of infrastructure, it consists of software, uh, people, policies and procedures, and other resources that are available that support computational, AI, and data intensive activities related to research. Typically, um, infrastructure includes <clears throat> supercomputers, uh, also in some cases known as uh, high performance computing systems, HPC. Uh, you'd heard of quite a bit of that uh, earlier today. Uh, even workstations, servers and storage and other physical and or virtual uh, computing platforms, including cloud, VMs, containers and so on. Uh, on the software side, uh, there's the system level software, mainly the operating system and the system libraries, firmware, et cetera middleware that sits between the application and the system, and it's going to include some libraries like math libraries and other tools, uh, management tools. If you're talking about a supercomputer, there are specific tools to manage uh, the, the resources like schedulers um, to deploy the cluster, to manage the cluster as well. Um, development environment, such as IDEs, uh, compilers, math libraries, uh, relevant software, uh, software that applications depend on. And then there's the research applications themselves. Um, and some of these applications could be parallel applications, therefore they require certain libraries like um, MPI or OpenMP. And then finally the user interface, which could be, um, for example, uh, a command line on a Linux system. It could be a web-based uh, like Jupyter Hub or MATLAB any interface that the user or uh, the researcher will interact with a supercomputer or any infrastructure. Uh, and then the next is people. Now, I put a star there because people is there actually, a lot of people forget about how important this is and how expensive it is. This is probably the most expensive part when it comes to research computing. And there's different levels, right? There's the, uh, and it's very, most of them are very technical. So system support, for example, these are sysadmins who look after the system. So uh, on HPC system, these will be an HPC sysadmin. Um, the user support will be people who uh, install applications, um, who support the users, help them submit uh, jobs uh, in their calculations. And then there is, <clears throat> excuse me, application development where people, uh, we have people who help uh, researchers develop the application, optimize it, if it's a serial application that runs on a single core or single processor, convert it to a parallel application. And then uh, finally, you have leadership uh, planning and governance uh, as well. So you need, you need people to help manage the center and, and plan and strategize, et cetera, and including governance uh, on top of that. And finally, uh, processes and policies. And this could be uh, simple stuff, uh, you know, like allowed usage, you know, quotas, how much a user can use at any moment in time, support levels, SLAs, how long this system stays up, uh, et cetera. Uh, who should have access, uh, security, uh, reporting requirements to the people who provide the funding, to the users, et cetera, and measuring the real value. And I'm not talking about total cost of ownership here, I'm talking about value. What added value does this uh, infrastructure, this whole um, center provide? So what is a supercomputer? Um, a lot of people talk about HPC. Um, in the past, the supercomputer was a, was a little higher level than a normal HPC. Now they're used interchangeably. 
Um, but generally, it's, it's a computer. Uh, it's, it's a high level, uh, high performing computer uh, that is, you know, when you compare it to a normal PC or laptop, but it's classified as research infrastructure. Okay? A lot of people say, hey, it's a computer, IT should manage it. There's a different level of management really should be looked at as research infrastructure and should be managed like a, a research equipment, like NMR, uh, genome sequencing and so on. The performance of these are measured uh, commonly in a, a, um, a unit called FLOPS, which is floating point operations per second. And a floating point operation is as simple as an addition of a floating point 1.5 plus 2.7. Uh, and how many of these are done in a second? Now, the fastest computers globally in the world are ranked uh, in, a, in a list called the top 500. And currently, the number one computer, the fastest computer in the world that at least has been admitted to, is uh, the one in Japan, uh, Fugaku. And uh, this has been number one since June 2020. It currently has a performance of about 442,000 teraflops. That's 442 times 10 to the power of 15, okay? And these are ranked. In the region, I think uh, there's Damam 7 in Saudi Arabia, Aramco, that's number 10. And in the UAE, uh, Group 42 has one in the top 100, I believe, and another one in the top uh, 300. So moving forward to our center. <clears throat> so our mission, uh, uh, we start with the mission for our center is to, um, to enable basically, we serve our researchers, faculty and students by providing them high performance computing as well as data center, uh, data science, sorry, and research computing services to support and enable them to carry out their research. Okay? And our uh, mission is to conduct world-class research um, uh, in the region as well as education. Our vision of course is to become one of the largest, the world's greatest research universities and therefore, us as a center, we would like to push the boundaries of computational research in support of it. <clears throat> Our strategy, we have key four areas that we are focusing on. Um, one is, the first one is enabling computational research at NYU AD. Uh, and this includes us support, you know, designing, procuring, operating a research, uh, computational research infrastructure like an HPC. Also includes us developing and implementing the research data strategy. Uh, there's governance oversight, which gives us oversight and guidance and data governance. Now with the growth of the volume of data and the prominence of data science, this is very, very important. Uh, you know, they, they say that uh, data is the, new, is the new gold or black gold or new oil. Uh, community engagement, we engage with our, uh, we, we form partnerships with other research uh, organizations, uh, other universities, et cetera. And we participate in building Abu Dhabi's knowledge economy. And as a center, uh, we want to become uh, a center of excellence where we provide innovation uh, and technical lead in HPC and technical computing. Uh, internally, we have two parts to our center. There's high performance computing and there's research support services. I will start with high performance computing uh, at NYU Abu Dhabi. The picture you see there is our current HPC system uh, named Delma. And Delma was launched in 2016, and um, it's named after one of the islands outside of Abu Dhabi. In brief, it's around 700 teraflops, uh, divided almost evenly between CPU and GPU uh, performance. The CPU part, we have around 13,000 CPU cores um, hosted in about 20 racks. Uh, the cores are in about 440 nodes. Um, this is based on Intel Broadwell CPUs, 28 cores per node with 128 GB of uh, RAM. We also have a, a few specialized nodes like very large memory nodes. This is uh, nodes which have two terabytes of RAM each. We have also some dedicated GPU nodes which are mainly used for AI uh, and machine learning, deep learning and NLP, even computer vision. And we have, uh, this provides around 40 uh, uh, NVIDIA Tesla V100s. In terms of storage, uh, we have over five petabytes of parallel storage between Lustre and VGFS file systems, and another three petabytes of archive in disk and tape. So this is for long-term uh, storage of our data once the projects are over. The parallel storage is used during uh, computation. 
Everything is connected through uh, a very fast infinity band, uh, Menelux EDR, at operating at 100 gigabits per second. Additionally, uh, we have a few um, database, uh, we have other nodes like a database server, some visualization nodes used for interactive and uh, graphical use of the cluster. In terms of utilization, um, I'll go through this quickly. Uh, the left graph shows you the number of processes running over the past year, and the right one shows you the CPU load. Now you may say, well, it's not going beyond 80. Actually, uh, it does, uh, but this is very coarse grained uh, because it's over a year. And we actually don't want it to go above 80 because uh, it helps. This um, would be challenging in managing the different jobs if it goes above 80 too, too long. Over the past year, um, the average utilization actually was above 80. It was about 88%. Our target was 80, maybe 85. Uh, so we are currently oversubscribed. Um, the machine itself offers around 100 million core hours. That's uh, you know how many cores we have and how many hours in a year. Uh, and about 90% of these jobs that run, that utilize this uh, utilization were parallel applications. So these are applications that run across multiple uh, nodes. Um, and out of that, we had about four, 214 active users in that year. 17 of them accounted for 83% of the utilization. And this is because these are very big users, people using um, 60 uh, nodes and above. And the, the pie chart shows you, for example, the biggest user of our cluster, for example, is physics at 34%. CPCM is our center for uh, prototype climate modeling. These are uh, researchers who develop uh, climate and ocean models. Uh, and then chemistry and space science are our biggest users. And, um, uh, CGSB here is genomics. They, in terms of CPU, they're not very big, but you will see that they, uh, they're they big users of our data and storage and so on. In terms of storage, um, our scratch and work, our parallel storage, uh, they, we, I haven't added the expansion. It's another two TB, uh, two petabyte to be added here. We're currently um, at this uh, utilization. In our home is where the users actually log in, so not a lot of data is stored. We have been in uh, um, the National Program for Artificial Intelligence Reports, which was launched in November 2020. Uh, and we are the largest uh, HPC in terms of performance and capability in academia. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, Group 42 is in, in the private sector. They are a, uh, a cloud company, as well as a health related company. Uh, and then you have the federal government and the UAE local government. I believe this is RTA, which is in Dubai. In terms of um, academia, um, we are the largest, obviously, in academia at the moment, uh, followed by Khalifa University, where Mr. Fahim, who uh, just spoke before me, uh, they currently have recently installed a uh, Huawei cluster uh, with about 4,000 cores, followed by UAU and Sharjah University. So um, there's not a lot of HPC systems within the UAE, except within these four uh, universities. Um, as I mentioned earlier, our uh, cluster is, was launched in 2016, so it's approaching its end of life, and we're currently oversubscribed. So we're currently planning, uh, um, uh, we're in the final stages actually of um, uh, uh, getting a new uh, cluster. And uh, our plan is to have, uh, uh, to, to focus only on the compute and networking part for this refresh. Um, we will have around 170, 670, 180 nodes. Um, we are going with uh, AMD Epic ROM, um, which will be 128 cores per node. And the bulk, what we call the bulk, will be uh, simply just have 512 memory, a GB of memory and a standard SD card. But we'll have some specialized nodes, which will also have, in addition to the above, uh, the latest GPU cards, and uh, NVMe uh, uh, storage. Now, these are obviously for AI and machine learning, deep learning, et cetera. But also, we have some applications that require high I throughput, IO throughput. So, we want to make use of local storage on the nodes for that. Network wise, this will have the latest IB in InfiniBand uh, HDR. The nodes will be connected at 100, but the core will be at 200. 
We opted for 100 because we saw our application will not make, uh, most of our applications will not make much benefit with going to 100. So this will cut in the cost. We also have an option for faculty to buy in. We expect that the faculty will buy another 40 or 50 nodes to start with. And we expect this cluster to be uh, launched at the beginning of September in this year. Uh, <clears throat> computational research um, at NYU AD. So some of the climate models, um, including ocean modeling, we've been heavy users of our cluster. And uh, the image you can see here uh, shows some of the simulations of the ocean and seas around the Arabian Peninsula. Um, other areas of research uh, that use the HPC include astrophysics. Uh, as I said, these are the biggest you know, simulation of galaxies, et cetera. Uh, and genomics and bioinformatics. Um, chemistry, where we, there's a lot of uh, chemistry simulations and modeling climate and ocean I mentioned, computer science mainly focused on AI and data science. So there's a lot of NLP, uh, there's a very active group uh, working on Arabic uh, translation uh, and machine learning. We also have a new area of research uh, growing now called digital humanities. These are people announcing humanities actually using data science, uh, using things like spatial humanities, visualization, AI, they scan all manuscripts, uh, They deal with a lot of geospatial on history uh, related research. And engineering uh, is a typical user of HPC, uh, CFDs, uh, uh, computational solid mechanics, but we also have uh, smart cities research, a uh, new center recently launched, as well as the center for cybersecurity. Uh, mathematics is another user, sorry, I jumped ahead. Uh, psychology, uh, we have a uh, psychology in, in, at NYUAD is, a, is in science, and they do a lot of uh, research on the functional MRI, where they look at the function of the brain under an MRI. This data and images are piped out through into the HPC for analysis, and we are actually working with them now to build the pipeline that would speed up this analysis and shorten the time from scan to analysis, complete analysis from months to actually days or hours. And finally, social sciences are a big, big users of data science and analytics. They are, they are big users of packages like R, Stata, uh, and Python. So there's a lot of serial job, but lots of them. Uh, they also do a lot of data science, you know, uh, scraping data from uh, like Twitter on the internet and doing analysis. We track research publications uh, by requesting that all publications have this acknowledgement statement in their publications. And uh, we have a notification from Google Scholar that uh, tells us when a publication, a new publication is out. The faculty themselves also notify us. So we keep track of these uh, and we use them for reporting. And this is a, a measure of success for us when researchers, researchers actually successfully publish. We track it over the years. So um, for example, we, the center itself launched in 2012, but publications started trickling in 2014. As you can see, we've been growing continuously and we've already started to track publications in 2021. Uh, based on discipline and areas of research, our biggest research uh, publication uh, contributors are uh, physics, as you can see, mainly astrophysics with around 30%. Uh, CGSB here is genomics and system biology, climate mo uh, modeling. Um, we also have chemistry here with around 10%, uh, computer science and engineering. Our campus in New York, uh, in uh, Shanghai, are also uh, users of our cluster. So they have some contributions, which is uh, under 5%. Um, New York, our campus in New York have their own HPC, so they do not um, use much of uh, our resources. We also collaborate with uh, uh, the researchers in, in uh, different projects. Uh, this is uh, the most recent publication. Uh, Benoit here highlighted is our, one of our computational uh, scientists, and he collaborated with the biologists to optimize their application and fine tune it to give results rather than months or years to uh, weeks and days. Um, we also collaborate with uh, uh, other universities, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Khalifa University, uh, University of Sharjah, American University of Sharjah, uh, and UAU. 
as well as Ankabut uh, and Adnok. Uh, we are obviously connected uh, to Ankabut uh, uh, as an engrin. Um, we also um, conduct uh, training uh, in HPC to different organizations. The most recent was a, a very comprehensive training program uh, to the UAE Navy. Uh, they have an HPC systems that uh, predict weather, uh, climate, and ocean uh, as well. Um, so they wanted us to train their um, uh, local um, uh, personnel or sysadmin to maintain their own systems and install and, and configure the applications. We also have research collaboration with CAOS uh, and the Saudi HPC in, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, in Oman, uh, personally, I have collaborations with SQU uh, and obviously we collaborate with Omran. We were, uh, I, I attended with uh, there's three of us who, who are here today, Mr. Fayyam and Dr. Yusuf as well, uh, at about two and a half years ago. Um, other research support services that we offer. Um, so not only, not everything fits on a high performance computer. Um, others would be on workstations and servers and we can manage this on behalf of the researcher. If they own the hardware, we can host it. Um, the campus has a computing storage where we can provide bare metal or, uh, um, VM or container based uh, 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 as a service to the faculty and researchers. We also um, offer uh, lab support, integrating experimental equipment, experimental labs into the infrastructure and transitioning them from other campuses if they're moving from another university. We provide uh, professional services. Research grant support is one of the biggest services we offer where a faculty member will sit with us before even applying for a grant uh, we understand, we sit with them and try to understand their research project, translate that into uh, computational requirements and a technical spec, get a cost estimate, then they can put that into their uh, grant. And when they get awarded the grant, they can then um, come to us and say, we've got the money, we've bought the machine, we help them buy it, install it, configure it and operate it. We also have with scientific application, research applications, offer training, but also develop programming and development as well. So we can take, we can write a, an application from scratch or go for, take a serial code and convert it to a parallel code, uh, take a MATLAB code, convert it to C++, et cetera. And more recently, we introduced uh, data science services where we support uh, data uh, science, analytics, visualization, data management, databases, big data, uh, and AI support. With uh, infrastructure wise, we also have a R&D uh, platform, and this is a purely virtual, it's a small infrastructure. It's only about five nodes plus one management. The picture you see there on the left is actually four nodes uh, or compute nodes in a 2U. And this hosts um, VMware, so there's uh, uh, vCenter, vSphere, vSAN, so contains storage and pro uh, provides uh, VMs. Additionally, uh, we can provide containers, Kubernetes especially. Uh, an additional node has G two GPUs on it, so we provide uh, GPU uh, virtualization through NVIDIA Grid. Uh, the containers are managed through ranchers, ranchers, so that's another tool we use for management as well as the vCenter for uh, VMs. We are in the process of adding another four nodes to this to grow it as well as needed. Um, on the visualization uh, side, we we have a, uh, a, I won't call it a large one, a medium size uh, visual wall. This is a three by three uh, panel. Uh, each panel is about 49 inch diagonal. So it's, it's a good uh, tool uh, to help people with, uh, you know, visualization, spe specifically GIS related, web, you know, web maps, any uh, graphical visualization requirements and rendering needed. It's supported by a high-end workstation with, with good graphical capabilities. And this is used for research and teaching. Um, and we provide uh, visualization professional services to support researchers who require uh, the use of this tool. Uh, it's hosted in our library. So uh, academic computing in the library also uses it for teaching. And that's it from me. Uh, thank you very much again for uh, inviting me to speak. And if you have any questions, I'll be uh, happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Motans, for your presentation. We'll go, to, for, we'll go for some questions. We have a question from Nadli. 
Do you suggest universities these days could, uh, could implement research and support for researchers to increase publication output? Um, yes, I mean, uh, now the question would be, uh, if you're starting from zero, uh, a big investment uh, could be challenging, right? Uh, now there are resources, uh, as we heard today, for example, cloud that's available for, for, for that, that can support it. But you do need some, uh, you need people on the ground who would help with that. If cloud provider can provide access to the infrastructure, can provide the software layer, but you know you need someone to help you get your application developed, get your application up and running. Um, if they require um, HPC, you need someone to uh, sysadmins to set it up and configure it for you. So cloud providers tend to provide you the infrastructure, but they would not provide you the level of support that you need to to carry out computational research. So. Human resources are needed at least on the ground to start with. Uh, infrastructure can be managed through nowadays, at least with cloud or with collaboration with other institutions. All right. Uh, next question, sir, uh, from Hana Krithin. Thank you for the great work. Is the infrastructure available to Astron member universities to use? Uh, yes, it's available only through collaboration with our faculty. So uh, it will have to be in a research area that our faculty are interested in. Uh, we currently have, as I mentioned, some collaborations with our faculty, with other institutions in the, in the UAE um, and uh, in Europe and the region, uh, but it has to be um, with our faculty. The reason we're doing it this way for two reasons. One, there's not a lot, as you saw, resources. We are heavily utilizing our, our, our resources. One, two, we want to encourage, so we are making the exception, we want to encourage collaboration. As Mr. Fahim said before me, um, you know, it's challenging to get uh, collaborations going. So we are trying from the bottom up by getting the faculty, in, giving the faculty incentive to collaborate. So we give them access to our resources. But unfortunately, that's the only way at this moment that we can do that. So I recommend they go and visit our website, uh, nyuad.nyu.edu and uh, look at what faculty research is going on and reach out to the faculty and then they would uh, initiate the process. Okay, uh, next question is from Basil Ayas. Dr. Mutaz, loved your presentation. What are your thoughts on quantum computing research and maturity in the Middle East? Well, quant quantum computing, <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit off at the moment. Um, I don't know if Mr. Fahim is on the call, but. I believe there is a, a, an institution here in the UAE that is trying to establish a quantum computing uh, research center. Uh, I don't know a lot of information about it, but as a technology, it's advancing fast. It's not going to be the solution for everything. Uh, and it's not gonna be ready, I think, for the, you know, at least for the next five to 10 years where it's going to be, when it's going to be in mass use. All right. Thank you, Dr. Mothos, for your presentation and time, and hope to meet you in person in Oman for the next event. Inshallah, inshallah. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a nice day, Thank you. Thank you.